Hey Chuck, give me proper PS2 portable that is cheap. This, my friends, is from a tribe called Ambanik. It has next generation chip, OLED screen, and it will cost you right around 185 American dollars. Can it play PS2 games? Yes, it can play PS2 as well as GameCube, PS Vita, Dreamcast, 3DS and even some Switch games. I was waiting for a next generation chip in a retro handheld for a long while. Now it's finally here and how much more powerful it really is. In terms of raw power or Geekbench 6 score, this is the score of Unisoc Tiger T618 that they've used for Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, etc. And when I compare it to this device, as you can see, single core is like twice as much and multi-core, yeah, a bit less. GPU power, as you can see, it's like four times as much on this new one. New one is using Unisoc Tiger T820, 8 cores, 6 nanometers. And this is the old one, T618, 8 cores, 12 nanometers. When I compare it to something like Snapdragon 855 on this device, 7 nanometers as you can see, it is not quite as powerful, but it's not also as much behind. This is CPU score, and this is GPU score comparison with Snapdragon 855. Some people might say it looks very similar to Odin 2 and I would agree but just look at the difference in the score, <laughs> it's like freaking night and day. GPU score as well, it's abysmal difference, it's like 3 times as much. Who cares about these numbers? Show me real life performance. Give me a second, we are almost there. When I was unboxing it, it felt exciting cause I knew what was inside. Not like when you unboxing shitty Christmas present that you had a bad feeling about. It runs Android 13. It comes pre-installed with bunch of emulators, but there are no ROMs. ROMs are only included if you opt for being a pirate of Caribbean, and you gotta pay extra for that. The device was greeting me with this cool live wallpaper when I switched it on, but I had to change it immediately for something more <laughs> soul pleasing. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The OLED screen is also very soul and eye pleasing. I think we should make a petition. OLEDs only on handhelds from now on petition. It has 5.5 inches, 1080p resolution, plenty brightness, colors are nice, but I have noticed when I was looking at it through the camera and I put the brightness a little bit lower, there was this weird waving effect going on. I could only see it through the lens though, I couldn't see it with my eyes, so not a big deal, not sure what was happening in there. Also, huge thanks to Gogeng Geek for sending it over for Anna's review. It's greatly appreciated. All opinions are my own, of course. They are biased, but they are my own. Let's try PS2 emulation. I know many people are looking for cheap PS2 portable, and this might be just it. The PS2 emulator came pre installed, so I've just inserted micro SD with ROMs and selected the folder. Now we can delve into it. I'm always trying this Matrix game first. Path of Neo, no issues at all, Vulcan backend, 1x resolution, very enjoyable. Need for Speed Underground 2, this is a faster racing game, weaker chips have always issues with those. Here I've seen some frame drops, but overall I would consider this as a playable experience at 1x resolution, frame skip turned off and all settings at default. I'm sure you'd be able to upscale plenty games and they would run absolutely fine, but for the sake of simplicity of this video, it is all at 1x resolution. Incredible Hulk, full speed. I haven't noticed any frame drops, even with a lot of explosions going on. Here I'm fighting cows and I'm liking every second of it. Ultimate Spider-Man. There were some frame drops in here, but still playable when traversing the city as well as when fighting. All these games are incredibly good, they are still holding up solid even in 2024, in my humble opinion. So what do you think? So far so good, so let's push it a bit harder. Resident Evil 4, full speed. There were some frame drops, but mostly when I was opening menu or gameplay was changing into cutscene. Devil May Cry 3, this one was not running full speed. When this happens, first thing you need to do is to change GPU renderer. I've changed it from Vulkan to OpenGL and this fixed the speed issues. It was running very good. God of War 2, it was running slower because I left the renderer at OpenGL. 
most of games perform better with Vulkan, so I've changed it back to Vulkan and again, very enjoyable. Fun fact, I was recording gameplay footage before going to work, but the clock wasn't changed, it was one hour less. And I had such a good time playing it that I almost missed my job because I was just checking this clock. Wouldn't be a bad scenario. Now I'm sure you want to see some games that struggle, because of course there are games that struggle, it's not Odin 2, there are limits. First one is Black. This game has a weird performance issues because some parts are running full speed, but some parts are slower. I wouldn't consider this one to be enjoyable, I've tried even OpenGL but it still didn't help. Burnout 3 Takedown, this one is a faster paced racing game and again there were some issues. I've tried to change OpenGL to Vulkan but it didn't help. Then you can maximize the performance by going into system settings and playing with the underclocking options. This in some cases helps a lot, in this one it helped a lot, I was able to make it kinda playable. So just keep in mind for some games you're gonna have to fiddle with settings, but with some games you're not gonna be able to help it. Chaos Legion was running ok, as well as Outrun 2006. But here again I was using mid underclock. Now we have a segment where I would like to send huge thanks to all of my Patreons and our channel members. And I'm gonna do it in this position. So huge thanks to Jared Smith, Daniel David, Dalai Lama, Joseph Sanander, Wayne Redding, Patmos D, David Grabka, Herman, Raul Gauthier, Nix, Marshmallow, Arcee from the NYC, Victor Ginelli, Pope Pepe, and huge thanks to brand new Patreon, Marcus Luther. Your, your support is greatly appreciated. This is quite art. Oh. What about Shadow of Colossus? This one was actually quite playable. I was expecting it to run way worse, but nope. It pleasantly surprised me. I've tested even more PS2 games like Yakuza, Mercenaries, or Destroy All Humans, and all of them were running fine. Just Destroy All Humans had some kind of graphical glitches on the screen, not sure why, but they were barely visible. Purely based on the performance of the PS2 emulation, on the quality of the OLED screen, on the overall ergonomics and on the price, I would say this is a strong contender for best budget handheld of 2024 and we are just getting started with the emulation. Whilst we are at the ergonomics, I wanna say I like it. It fits nicely into my hands, it fits into them maybe even a bit more than Odin 2 because of these pieces at the bottom, at the corners, because of these bumps. It has also Hall Effect joysticks and Hall triggers. D-pad is not bad either, it looks kinda weird, I'll be testing it more later. There are also LED lights around joysticks, unfortunately they cannot be customized or at least the color of them, which is a shame, this is a must have feature in my opinion. Speakers sound also good, they are downwards firing, so when you hold it in your hands, they are firing in your palms, similarly like on the switch light. They are loud enough, there is not much bass, but they are doing their job. Plus there is also headphone jack from the bottom and bluetooth in case you want to connect some headphones. Now I'm sure you're waiting for your PS Vita fix. And here it comes in form of Vita Freaky Android emulator version 11. You cannot find this emulator on the Play Store and it hasn't come pre-installed on the device. But it is super easy to get it running. You just install APK from GitHub, plus you need to install firmware and font package. Voila, job done. Now get the games running. People seem to have issues with this, but all you need to do is to go to file and either choose to install .pkg or .zip slash .vpk. I'm always installing .zips. You just get a game in no NPDRM format and then zip it then choose the zip in the emulator and it will install it on your internal storage. Job done, let's play some exclusive PS Vita games. Gravity Rush was running full speed at 1x resolution. I've pushed it to 2x resolution for Drive Girls and still it had stable frame rate. Quite impressive and the games look stunning on the OLED screen. So is this the true Vita successor? Well, you be the judge. 
it surely looks good on a thumbnail if I even ended up using it because I have always such a hard time to create thumbnails and titles it's not easy just look at this emulation of Wipeout 2048 upscaled to 2x and tell me it's not Vita's successor it has higher resolution it can play PS2 games what else would you want? full Vita library? that's not possible unfortunately it doesn't have Snapdragon chip so you cannot use custom GPU drivers which is a big downside in terms of PS Vita emulation compatibility sometimes I have to admit the results are quite interesting just look at this Soul Sacrifice <laughs> emulation and tell me it doesn't look like a loads of fun it doesn't look like that ok then look at this upscaled Street Fighter X Tekken and tell me it doesn't run well it does run well the shape of the d-pad looks kinda weird it has this glossy texture but surprisingly I was oh. able to pull off Hudoken consistently and even this kick that I don't really know the name of cause I'm not really into Street Fighter hey Chuck very switch emulation you still scared of ninjas? maybe a little bit but I'm bringing it to you anyway I was using latest user release we know what happened in the meantime but I think forks didn't get as far for now so you can expect this kind of performance a bit better first I've tried Need for Speed Hot Pursuit the remastered version and it was running like at 17 fps so not really playable then I had a great idea of downscaling it to 540p and frame rate increased to like 22 fps younger me would without hesitation tell you that this is absolutely playable and 2024 me says um, if you don't have any other handheld to play it on I mean why not Call of Juarez Gunslinger same case in here 1x bit slower 540p kinda playable and it still looks pretty good on 5.5 inch screen you cannot really see that much of a downgrade Prince of Persia Lost Crown same thing in here at 1x bit slow but when I've changed it to 540p it was running around 50 fps so playable forgot to mention but I also had this high performance mode switched on in the settings not exactly sure what difference it makes but when I see the button that says high CPU mode I'm always clicking it Blades of Time was running fine even at 1x resolution that's like a 3D hack and slash game other games I've tried were really slow like Super Mario 3D World Super Mario Wonder or Hades for proper Switch emulation you would need much more horsepower custom GPU drivers would also come in very handy but I mean you can still come across titles that are playable like Prince of Persia there are many great games on the Switch that are not available on the mobile cause you know you can play all of the Android games natively this device was surprisingly able to run Super Mario 3D Land the 3DS game at full speed finally retro handheld that managed to pull it off thumbs up on my 128 gig SD card that was included I even found Resident Evil Revelations the 3DS port and it was kinda playable it is not fast paced game it was a bit stuttery when it was compiling shaders but when it was done with it it was running quite good by now I have recorded about three and a half hours of gameplay footage I don't know how I ended up with so much of footage so now I'll show you just some PSP and GameCube emulation and that would be it for this video but I do really like this device so there are more videos to come if you wanna see them click this button for GameCube I have only tested two games Metroid Prime 1 and 2 first one was running full speed and second one a bit slower with Dolphin MMGR2 and at default settings but the second one is always harder to emulate for PSP I've also only tested two games God of War and Dante's Inferno the God of War knockoff both of them were running great even upscaled to 3x of original resolution I was trying even 4x but here I had to turn on frame skip to get to a somewhat enjoyable experience okay so let's sum it up what I like I like the OLED screen it looked good and playable even in direct sunlight if you want to do it for whatever reason I like the performance it wasn't as powerful as Odin 2 but that one is also more expensive 
Odin took us right around $300, this one is 185 The link that I'm including from GoGengeek, they are selling it for $230. It is always a bit more expensive on their website. Plus, they always have some kind of discount available. Always forgetting about these discounts. Uh, so there is 10% off, which makes it 230 minus 23, 207 which is kind of reasonable considering there are taxes and shipping are included. Don't forget if you buy it for Gogan Geek, you're supporting channel because I'm getting cut as well. If you want to buy the cheapest version and support the channel by joining or becoming a Patreon, that's also an option, no pressure of course. Or if you are just enjoying these videos, that also means a world to me. And if you want to just flip me off, yeah, there's also an option. Uh, Odin 2 might be way more powerful. But I have noticed that the OLED is also a very powerful weapon. Just look at the screen difference between Odin 2 and Ambani. I mean, it's so pleasing that sometimes I would happily take this compromise. Lower resolution, but higher visual fidelity with OLED. With these smaller screens, it's quite forgiving. One X looks still so good, especially on the OLED. I also like the ergonomics, joysticks and triggers feel nice. It has also active cooling, which comes in handy. You can switch it off, put it on automatic or always turned on. I left it on auto, but it very rarely kicked in. Oh Chuck, haven't you forgot about anything? What about uh, the things that you don't like? Oh yeah, you're right, but I haven't really forgot about it. Just there aren't as many things that I do not like. I mean, um, the chip could have been stronger, the weird waving effect, also not sure about that, but you can see it, so I mean, it's fine. Speaker's quality is also not terrible, so I mean, that's kind of okay for the money you're paying. Battery life is also kind of doable, it has 55,000 milliamp hours. Overall, I would say this is pretty solid package. Uh, I'm sure there's gonna be discounts for it later, you know, when it's gonna be like not uh, brand new, then it's gonna be selling for cheap, then it's gonna be maybe even more worth it. So in the end, this was very positive experience for me. I do really like this device a lot and frankly, I think I've needed it because after all the other reviews, I mean, they are not bad devices, well, maybe this one is bad, but I do really need something like this, something that can play PS2 games, you know, because that's what uh, I like the most, you know, these older games, not really that generation SNES. There are also quality games, but I grew up with the games like this, you know, so that's why I like it so much, and that's why it makes me happy, you know, to make a review of it. With the older generation of the handhelds and the older chip, I mean, that one left a lot to be desired, to say the least. You know, you could have emulated some PS2 games, but uh, this one gives you much more freedom in terms of doing whatever you want without much hassle, you know, you just put a ROM in it, launch it, and that's basically it. As I said, I like it, more videos are coming, subscribe to not miss it. I would like to thank you all for watching, thanks to members and Patreons for support. Peace out. We've been on the run, driving in the sun, looking out for number one. California, here we come, right back where we started from. Hustles, grab your guns, you shout away the time Driving down the 101 California, here we come Right back where we started from California